Hi, I'm David Smith and I'm the president of Factory 5 Racing. I want to talk to you real quickly about the changes we've made to our flagship GTM supercar. Now, the changes were two areas. One, we wanted to reduce the cost to build the car. And two, we wanted to increase the quality of the parts that we're shipping. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the bodywork side and the, the body shape. This is where a lot of the changes were made, really the most of the changes. Um, one was on reducing cost. So we went to the Mark IV, like our Roadster was changed to the Mark IV, went to new expensive molds and a different laminate schedule, which is really a red gel coat. These are tight tolerance molds. That means the car requires less body work. So one of the biggest complaints with customers is how much money it costs to paint the car. Well now that's, that's been cut, like the Roadster, about in half. We also, in another way to reduce body work, is we've molded in these headlamp buckets. These used to be buckets that were, were uh, glassed in by the owner. Now these are molded in process. Let's talk about the shape changes. That's the, most thing, the thing I'm most excited about. The shape changes, starting at the nose, is we've added some contours to the nose. The whole front end was redesigned. There's not a single panel on this car that's the same as the old car. So all these panels are new molds. We've got a canard mount up front. For racing, you can mount a canard. On the street, you can leave it alone. It's a nice looking detail. We've got a smaller aperture for the radiator opening. And we've got these new inset grills that actually aid in cooling. We've got a, a, a hood detail all the way back to the back of the hood. And we've gotten rid of the bump on the windshield. Now I'll show you these on the finished car and they'll look a lot better. But on the kit, those are already standard. Going backwards, we've got uh, a, an A-pillar mount that used to be on the door, is now part of the body. Makes it a lot easier to line up your doors and a lot easier to get the windows to line up. Out back, it was the rear hatch. We've modified the rear hatch so that it's a little bit shorter. Now you can open and close it with a fixed rear wing. It also doesn't have the interference on the outside of the body, so the rear clip of the body is one piece. Um, those are about the changes on the body. Now we're going to go over and look at the car, and we're going to look at the changes on the car as well as some exciting changes with transaxle, engine, and wheels. All right, so the changes on the kit are a lot more dramatic when you see them on the finished car. I'm going to talk about the body changes. We have an all-new interior that I want to talk about some running gear and wheel changes, but let's just focus on the body first. On the front end, that detail that we added really tightens up the front end. It brings the car from really a 2000 series to a, a 2010 and more modern updated look. You've got a smaller aperture, you've got those canard mounts on the front, you've got the details on the hood, the inset hood vents, we used carbon fiber on this car, they come standard in fiberglass, you can order the carbon fiber. The headlamp buckets were easier to do. Going back on the car with the body, the, um, the, the center roof scoop is a functional roof scoop. That means it vents hot air from the, from the engine when it's parked, but it also feeds fresh air when you're driving. The doors open and close a lot easier now because of those A pillars. Um, I think going backwards, one of the small changes we made in process, that people don't know about it, was we changed these rear quarter windows from polycarbonate to glass. So now all of the top glass is, is all glass. There's no polycarbonate. The rear hatch opens up and allows the rear wing to stay fixed. It's kind of a nice option. The rear diffuser of the car, when we went to the wind tunnel, we kind of optimized it. Uh, we've dropped the angle down, and what that does is it increases the velocity of the air going out from underneath the car. So it increases downforce, but also increases cooling. Those changes on the body result in a car that I think is a lot prettier. Um, the body works easier, so you'll pay less money on the paint job. Now let's look about the interior. What we did was we took the same basic design interior. We added all new gauges. So the gauges don't have the old auto meter gauges. They're now a, an OEM looking gauge. Uh, the, the panels are now all stitched. And, and so you have a, a hand stitched seam all the way around the, uh, the panels. And they look a lot tighter and a lot nicer. The seats are all new. It's the same shape, but it's a different covering. A little tighter, a little qual more quality. Um, let's talk about the carbon package quickly before I go to the mechanicals. Um, we've still got the same side skirts. Obviously, the front um, spoiler is, is, is contoured to match the body. We've got the uh, vents in the hood. We've got the roof vent. You can get this in carbon or regular. We've got a rear wing. It's a frame-mounted rear wing. Really, those, those features are, are, I think, make the car a little bit, give it a little more downforce and, and at least a little easier to do. Let's talk about the chassis now. Um, there weren't a lot of changes on the chassis we had to do. Uh, a lot of customers wanted more caster, so we did that on the front end. So the front end geometry is a little better, car handles a little better. Chassis didn't need much. I mean, it's already a state-of-the-art chassis. Coming back on the engine and transmission, you know, back in the day, we could get a Porsche transaxle for 2,500 bucks. Those are fewer and farther between now. That was 2006. Now we're in 2010. The, uh, we've been working with a lot of different transaxle guys, and we finally found uh, the boys at Mendiola, and uh, Mike Mendiola and Ian have given us this five-speed unit. It's in the car right now. 
We have some final gearing issues to go, and, and then, then we'll be ready to sell this unit. It'll be reasonably priced, 600 horsepower, brand new. Nice, it bolts right to the LS series engines, so you don't need an adapter. Shifter linkage is a little better, comes with it. So I'm excited about this transmission. If you saw television, the E-Rod engine by GM. We did a special on horsepower TV with the E-Rod engine. 498 horsepower, 440 foot-pounds of torque, about eight grand. That's a bargain. Um, comes right from GM, and for people who have problems with emissions, in states with emissions problems, you've got a, a, an engine that comes with catalytic converters, uh, the engine controller and the harness, all come in one big package. So for eight grand, maybe $8,500 I saw it advertised on TV, that's a phenomenal performance bargain, and it really addresses some of the emissions requirements that some states have. That's for guys that are not running a, a, a donor car. Now on the wheel side, Wheels are expensive. The cheapest wheel we had was about three grand, $3,500. We've got a new set of wheels that are only $1,300 for the whole set. They're super light, they're, they're strong as heck, they're DOT safe wheels, but they allow, they're 18s, and they allow for a big old 335 rear tire. So the 335 gives you a great hookup off the line, and it looks good. Um, we're running Toyos, Toyos are our company sponsor. They look good with these wheels. I've driven them, they drive great, they're affordable, I think they look good and they're on the car. So, in general, the focus of the second generation GTM was more refinement than revolution. We want to tighten up the car, make it a little prettier, increase the performance envelope just a little bit, reduce the cost to build the car, and I think we did that. So I hope you like what we've done on the second generation GTM.